Hey, Nolan, I was talking to uh, Magic, Bill Russell, Larry and Mel. Now, you look a lot better now than you looked years ago. <laughs> but we want to know where you're preaching next Sunday because we're going to fly down there. These guys are dear to my heart right here. Dear to my heart. You know, they, uh, a lot of championships there. A lot of championships. A lot of rings. And you know, I want to say to not only this class of inductees, but I see a lot of guys out there that I've known and played against myself for years. So congratulations to the old inductees into the Hall of Fame. I don't know where the chairs are, boys. I know, I know you're a little younger than me, but you got to sit down. I may not be the oldest guy that's ever been inducted into the Hall of Fame, but I'll bet I'm in the top five. <laughs> and if if it hadn't been for Jerry Coangelo, Pat, I'd be over at the hotel with those autograph seekers trying to get autographs from all these guys. It's been a great career. It's been a great career starting out in, in Terre Haute, Indiana. And uh, I was a wild kid. I was a wild kid. December 7th, 1941, Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. In our neighborhood, Gersmeyer High School, and I was a kid, the juniors and seniors joined up. Eight of them joined the Marine Corps. In all the battles, beach landings in the South Pacific, Okinawa, Guadalcanal, Iwo Jima, these eight guys were in all those beach landings. And guess what? They made it home. They kind of adopted me, and Gershmeyer Tech being a technical school, they had to go to night school when they got back to get their high school diploma. And they built me my first basketball goal down the alley in Sullivan's backyard. And that's where I spent a lot of time. They put a light up in an old oak tree there so you could play morning or night. Now, I was a wild kid. I was a wild kid. There's no question about that. I'm still a little bit wild. <laughs> At 82, you can't be too wild. <laughs> but uh, I went up and down that alley, and there was this lady down there that had uh, a pear tree in her yard and if you got in that yard to pick any pears up she would raise holy hell <laughs> well, one day me and my buddy went fishing and we used to sit on this little bridge little rock bridge and we catch little tiny bluegill little fish and this snake would stick its head out of the rocks and, 
when we're both pulling those up and take them off our hook. Well, we stayed and kept going, kept going and kept going, and guess what? Finally, we caught that snake, and we pulled it up on there and smashed its head on those rocks. <laughs> well, we took it home. And where I come from, everybody had an outhouse, including that lady that had the pear tree. <laughs> we waited and waited. We put that snake around that toilet hole, and we waited a long time. But here she come. Here she come. She got in there, and all of a sudden, that door, boom, flashed open. She had her bloomers down around her ankles. Yeah, I never will forget that. Never will forget it. Never will forget that one. Like all of us, all of us had a road that we traveled. Pretty much the same to get here, grade school, junior high, high school, college, whatnot. And we all had coaches. It's a time to remember those that got us where we are tonight. And I've often said, you know, for me, it took a while, but I'm going out in style. I had a great high school coach by the name of Howard Sharp. He was a protege of Glenn Curtis at Indiana State, Indiana State Teachers College, not Indiana State University. Glenn Curtis coached Johnny Wood in high school at Martinsville High School. So fundamentally sound, I learned a lot, a lot about basketball from Howard Sharp. Then uh, things worked out for me, and I went down to Indiana University. And with a group of other great guys that I think of often, I think of, of Dick Farley, Charlie Crock, Don Schlunt, that starting front line, they've all passed away. They've all passed away. But I think about them. And the night in 1953 in Kansas City, I was the captain of that ball club, that Indiana ball club. They called us the Hurry and Hoosiers. I had to go to the half court to meet the captain of Kansas ball club. You'd be surprised to know who it was. It was Dean Smith, Billy Cunningham, who later coached at North Carolina, and the Dean Dome was named after him. But that ball, ball game went down to the final seconds, final seconds, and I got fouled. I'm on the line for two free throws. Uh, Fog Allen was the coach at Kansas. He called a timeout. Let me think about it for a while. And he did the right thing. Because when I got on the free throw line for, for that first one, I went to Choke City like you can't believe. <laughs> but I made the next one, and we hung on and, and beat Kansas 69-68 for the national championship. So we're in a dressing room, and all the media's in there, and they're over there talking to my coach, who's a Hall of Famer, Branch McCracken. And after they got through with him, they came over to talk to me. And they said, we were talking to Coach McCracken, and he said, you had ice water in your veins. I said, baby, if that was ice water, it sure as hell felt awful warm when it was running down my leg.
<laughs> yeah. I know these guys been in that circumstance too. <laughs> but uh, two Big Ten championships, national championship there, and then you move on. You move on and uh, East-West College All-Star Game. Last year, we had an inductee into the Hall of Fame that I met and played against many years, Lakers against the Knicks, uh, Richie Guerin. Richie's out there somewhere. We played there, and in those days, in those days, they had the college All-Americans that played, they called it the World Series of Basketball. We played the Harlem Globetrotters 21 games in 26 nights in all the major arenas in the United States. That's back when they had Goose Tatum, and I'm no metal larks here, but that's when Goose Tatum and Marcus Haynes, they were tough. They were tough. We closed out the series with an outdoor game in the Los Angeles Coliseum. And we had a lot of guys on that ball club that are in this Hall of Fame today. So that, you know, it was a great experience, uh, the college experience. Then when, you, when, it, when you, get over, you get over that, everybody back then had to do, do a deuce in the Army or Navy or whatever. So I spent two years. I had a good Army buddy. I had a good Army buddy. I said, I knew he was good enough, and I said, one of these days you're going to be playing in the NBA. Well, he didn't believe me, but he turned out to be one of the all-time greats with the Boston Celtics, Sam Jones. He was a dandy. I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking about those years with the uh, Lakers. Uh, Magic knows that I was on the first Los Angeles Laker team in 1960. And I had the opportunity to play with guys that are all-time greats. Elgin Baylor, Jerry West, and it gave me the opportunity, which I think about at my age now, it gave me the opportunity to play against the great, all-time great players. Bill Russell, Bob Cousy, Tommy Heinsohn, and my old buddy Sam Jones with Celtics, Bob Pettit with St. Louis Hawks, Oscar Robertson with Cincinnati Royals, Wilt Chamberlain, Dolph Shays, all these guys are in the Hall of Fame. They're all in the Hall of Fame. So it was, it was a great career, and uh, then the coaching thing came around. And it ended up, I coached the NBA before I ever coached in the ABA, but, but I've had, I'd had four Hall of Famers uh, during my coaching career. The first ones were with the Baltimore Bullets, which is now the Washington Wizards. I had Walter Bellamy, a center who just passed away about six months ago. He was here last year. He was here last year. Walter passed away. And I had a forward that I got out of the University of Idaho on the second round. And he ended up being one of the greatest defensive forwards in NBA history. His name's Gus Johnson. Those were two Hall of Famers then. Now, the ABA, I had two. Two with the ABA. And we're going to get some more. But I had Mel Daniels right here. Now, you know, I look at these two guys, if you're going to start a ball club, by God, I'd take either one of them. 
The other one you probably haven't heard much of, and you'll never know how great, great a player this guy was. His name's Roger Brown, and he went in prior to Mel going in. But we had some great times back in the, the ABA. There's players, they, they talk about the ABA like we're a minor league to the NBA. Well, I played in the NBA, and that's not true. If you want to go back and look at the players we ended up with in the ABA before the merger, you're looking at Moses Malone, you're looking at the Iceman, George Gervin, you're looking at Dr. J, Julius Irving. I can go on, Dan Issel. Uh, by the time the merger came, and David was there then, by the time the merger came, we had the players. And they needed our players as bad as we needed them because we'd gone broke. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have no money. As a matter of fact, my wife and her front office staff ran a telethon that saved the Pacer franchise. Yeah, that happened. That happened. One of my frontline guys, and I, and I talk about these guys, I had a front line there with the Pacers, and I've seen them all. Now, I've seen all the front lines that have come down the pike in the last 60 years or so. I had a front line with Mel Daniels in the middle, George McGinnis at one forward, and Roger Brown at the other forward. Those guys could have competed against any front line that I've seen. They could have competed against him. Those were great, fun days. I had that front line. In the backcourt, I had Freddie Lewis, Donnie Freeman, Billy Keller, Tommy Thacker. Backing up those guys up front, I had Bob Nedelecki, Darnell Hillman, and some of those guys played in the NBA after the merger. But I remember one time, we were in a playoff situation, and we were in a lot of playoffs because we went to the championship series five times in eight years. But we're down in San Antonio, San Antonio Spurs. And this is when they had one of their better ball clubs they ever had. They had the Iceman, George Gervin, they had Jimmy Silas, Billy Paltz, Larry Keenan, Mark Oberding, you can go down the line. They won over 60 ball games. And we go in there as the underdog, as the underdog on a Sunday afternoon. And they had some people, which I think some of the old guys are familiar with, called the baseline bums. They'd spit on you, throw beer on you. So we go in there on Sunday afternoon, we pull off the upset. We beat them. And we're back at the hotel celebrating. We're, we're celebrating. We don't have to play them again until Tuesday night. Well, we go in there on Tuesday night now, and you know, this is a seven-game series. We go in there on Tuesday night, and it's a real tight ball game, a tight ball game. And uh, <clears throat> with about three minutes to play, the score was tied. And we got a rebound. And Don Boosie was in the middle on the break. George McGinnis was in the outside lane. Boo hit George with a bounce pass going into the hoop. Now here's a guy 6'8", 240. They had a kid back, and most of you know about this kid. His name was George Carl, who had a great NBA coaching career. But he was a, uh, he was a rook then, and somebody had fouled out, and he was in the ball game. So George goes into the hoop, and George Carl gets right in front of him. And he knocked him into that backstop like you can't believe. George is all bleeding and everything. The referee calls a charging foul. 
Well, McGinnis goes nuts. He's out there going crazy, see, because now, now we're at a nitty-gritty point in the ball game, and I had to go out on the floor so he didn't get kicked out of the ball game. And in the next minute and a half or two minutes, we ran off 10 straight points, and we had them in Lock City. We had them locked up. Well, funny thing happened. Shots taken by San Antonio. Miss, we get the rebound. Here's Boosie on the fast break. Here's George in that outside lane again. Boosie hits him with the bounce pass. George takes the ball and throws it up in the stands. There was George Carl back there. And he ran right over him again and knocked him into the backstop. And he turned around to the refs. And he said, now that's a charge and foul. <laughs> I saved uh, the best for last, the most important thing to me. You know, when I was at IU in the fall of 1950, I met my wife, Nancy. We just had our 60th wedding anniversary. Five children, they're here tonight. Now, they're, they're difficult names to remember <laughs> because if I would, you know, you have to call them to dinner, you, you want simple names. So our firstborn was our only daughter. Her name was Terry, Terrell. Now then we had four boys, Bobby, Billy, Tommy, and Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> So they're, they're all here uh, tonight with their husbands and wives, and I got our three oldest grandchildren here, uh, Katie and, and Ellie and Bo. So, you know, it's a family affair. We're out here having a hell of a time. And uh, the way I look at it, tomorrow, I guess it's tomorrow, we got to go into uh, the Mohican Sun. I've never been there. But I'll tell you one thing. Those blackjack dealers better be careful with me or I'll own the joint. <laughs> Chrissy, you liked that, didn't you? Because you know it's true. <laughs> well... Now, to all, I've got several people here tonight, to all the people in the PACER organization that came all the way out here, all my friends that came all the way out here, I want to say thank you. If I go back and finish up uh, d doing ball games, which I used to do home games now, I think Larry Joe said, Larry Joe said, you got to get off the road. I had a heart attack outside of Madison Square Garden about three years ago. He said, you're not traveling anymore. <laughs> so I do, the, I do the radio home games. Just, it keeps me in the game, and that's, uh, you know, that's fun. Uh, but that'll be my 48th year, <laughs> 48th year with the Pacers, because I was there in 67 when it started. <laughs> All those folks. Well, hell, the head coach of the Pacers is here, the assistant coaches, the team eye doctor. <laughs> uh, they're all here. They're all here. And uh, God bless Larry and uh, Mel. You know, it, uh, these, these two guys, you know, guys play basketball. Played 20 points, 30 points. That was nothing to them. Start looking, looking at it when they get to 40. And then many times when they got 50 or better, 
and then several times when they got over 60. So when you talk about guys that could play the game, you're looking at two of them right up here. And we've been dear friends for a long time. I hope I didn't miss anything, but I probably did. The only thing left to say is I've had a love affair with the fans and the people in the state of Indiana. We call ourselves Hoosiers. And they've been very supportive. It's a love affair that has gone on for years since I was at Indiana University. And I wish that it could last forever. But I know better than that. So as I look around this room, the Lord has had his hand on my shoulder. Now here's what I hope for all of you. That the Lord puts his hand on your shoulder and blesses you all the years of your life. Thank you. Thank you.